This video is sponsored by Audible. Greetings, boogie fans! Michael here, and it's time for another one of my playthrough challenges. If you missed the first one where I attempted to beat Pokemon Platinum without catching a single Pokemon, you can watch that right up there. This challenge will be an emerald version since it's been several years since I last played it, and the specific challenge was actually suggested by a few of you. Can I beat the game without teaching any new moves to any Pokemon? To further elaborate, I cannot alter the move set of any Pokemon I obtain. The moves it has when I catch it are the moves it's stuck with forever. If a Pokemon has less than four moves when I obtain it, then it just ends up with the next level up moves that it will learn. That's not really me altering the move set because if it has empty move slots, the next level up moves happen automatically. So is it possible to beat Emerald without teaching any Pokemon any new moves? Well. Technically, no, it's not, because there are several HMs required to beat the game that no Pokemon learn by level up. And with this rule set, the only moves available to me are level up moves. However, for the sake of actually being able to do the challenge, I'm going to make use of a rule that many other people who do Pokemon playthrough challenges utilize. A Pokemon can be taught an HM move, but then it cannot be used in battle. Here are all the rules for this playthrough. Number one, I may not teach any Pokemon any new moves, excluding the automatically learned ones via level up if the Pokemon has three or fewer moves upon obtaining it. Number two, Pokemon can be taught HM moves for the purposes of game progression, but cannot be used in battle if they know any HMs. Number three, trade evolution Pokemon are modified to evolve by level up instead. And number four, no using legendaries. In Emerald, you can get a level 70 Rayquaza with Outrage and Fly before the Pokemon League, and that just seems too cheap and too easy, so I'm not gonna use it. Or the Regis. Also, before I dive in, on my last playthrough challenge, several people said that it was too easy because I had six fully evolved Pokemon when other people are beating games with just one weak Pokemon. Well, to, to you slanderers, I do say that you're absolutely right. Yes, it was much easier than the other playthrough challenges out there. But for now, I don't want to do challenges that are too hard because I'm an angry weenie who doesn't want to suffer through an entire playthrough that's too hard. But also another thing to consider about this challenge and the last one is that a big part of the challenge is actually the research, figuring out whether it's possible, what Pokemon I can find that will be good for my team and stuff like that. That's a part of the challenge that doesn't really show up in the video, so just, just keep that in mind. I spent a lot of hours researching for this. And also, this particular playthrough ended up being a lot tougher and a lot more frustrating than I originally intended, so if I get a little irritated or snippy while I'm filming this video, I'm sorry, I'm reliving memories that were painful. But enough defending my wimpy butt, let's finally dive in to Can I Beat Pokemon Emerald Without Teaching Any Pokemon Any New Moves. The first decision I am met with is choosing a starter, and I selected Mudkip for two reasons. The first is that it will end up with two stab moves, that being Mud Slap and Water Gun, whereas the other starters will only have one stab move. The second reason is that the typing of Water Ground is really good in the early game, being super effective against three of the first four gyms. I named the Mudkip Dirt Lobber, as a reference to the type of wasp called a Dirt Dauber, but with the name changed to mean that it's throwing the dirt rather than making a nest out of it. The next chunk of the game was pretty uneventful, being just like any other early Hoenn game playthrough. I finally caught another intended team member in the Petalburg Forest, that being a Shroomish with the moveset of Absorb, Tackle, Stun Spore, and Leech Seed. While Absorb is terribly weak and Tackle is Tackle, I figured that Leech Seed and Stun Spore would come in a lot of handy, especially for the stall type battles. I named the Shroomish Disruptor because that is its intended purpose, to disrupt the battle. I arrived at Rustboro City and my next goal was to catch an Abra. Since Abra only knows Teleport, that means most of the moves that it'll end up with are Kadabra moves. Moves, those being Confusion, Disable, and Psybeam. While Psybeam isn't amazingly strong, it's still got solid power, plus Teleport will be nice for when I don't have Fly. Unfortunately, Abra did not want to behave. After about 10 minutes of trying to find one with its low encounter rate, then every single one fleeing either after I threw a ball or before I had the chance to paralyze it with Stun Spore, I needed a break. Those 10 minutes were played at 10 times speed, so if I had been playing a game that I could not speed up, 
I would have spent well over an hour just failing to get an Abra. I did get to level up Shroomish and Mudkip in the process, but still, it was ridiculous. I decided to go ahead and defeat Roxanne, which wasn't hard since my team's movesets are still normal for this point in the game. Mudkip O-code her Geodudes, then I decided to use Shroomish to beat Nosepass. Nosepass took a while since Absorb didn't hit hard and she healed up multiple times, but with Stun Spore and Leech Seed, I was never in danger of losing. Mudkip evolved into Marsh Chomp after the battle, and I sadly had to say no to Mudshot. It was once again time to attempt getting an Abra, and again I was met with failure. I tried getting Shroomish fast enough to outspeed and Stun Spore in hopes of making it get fully paralyzed, but nothing worked. After less time than my first attempt, I decided that if I was going to stick it out and get this Abra, I wanted a higher level one, so I'd get it in Granite Cave. I rescued Pico and took the boat to Duford Town, immediately heading for Granite Cave upon arrival. After many more failed attempts, I finally caught a frickin' Abra. I named it Cryptid, the term for an animal whose existence is unproven, like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, because for a while I was unsure that one that could be captured actually existed. Seriously, this was the worst time I have ever had trying to catch an Abra. Like, I failed like probably over 30. It was ridiculous. I grinded Abra up via switch training until it evolved, then proceeded to wipe the floor with the Doofer gym trainers. The battle with Brawly was similarly one-sided. Kadabra O-code his Machop, Two-Hit KO'd his Metatite, and O-code his Makuhita. It was a breeze, but only because I had Kadabra. Side note, remember how one of the rules is that trade evolutions are changed to level up evolutions? Well, that's the reason why I did not immediately evolve Cryptid into an Alakazam. It, along with all of the other Gen 1 trade evolutions, were changed to evolving by level up at level 37, which, I think it's fair, you know, it's about the same as a fully evolved starter. I arrived in Slateport and progressed through this section pretty quickly, and Disruptor evolved while battling in the Seashore House. Next up is the infamous Route 110 rival battle, which actually wasn't a problem. Kadabra handled her Wingull, Grovile, and Slugma pretty easily. I got to Mauville and got the bike, then beat Wally in front of the gym. I immediately started fighting through the gym because the next team member I wanted required Rock Smash for me to access. The gym trainers weren't much trouble, so it was time to fight Watson. I led with Marsh Chomp because of the ground type advantage. Voltorb went down to a crit mud slap, which was nice. Electrike required two, but it didn't do much damage in the process, so that was fine. Magneton, the Pokemon four times weak to ground, also required two mud slaps to KO. This move is just, uh, it's disgustingly weak. Finally, in came Manectric, and unfortunately, mud slap only did about one fifth to a quarter of its health. I brought in Breloom to go with the Leech Seed stall strategy, because otherwise I would have run out of Mudslap PP. It took a while, but I was never in danger of losing, and Manectric eventually fell. I rushed off to the fiery path as fast as possible to get my next team member, one I knew would be extremely helpful the entire playthrough, Machop. Machop has Focus Energy, Leer, Karate Chop, and the truly amazing move, Low Kick. Low Kick's power depends on the opponent's weight, which means it has a maximum possible power of 120. It'll be great against heavy steel and rock types that are weak to fighting. I named the Machop Combatant, realized I misspelled it, then ran back to the Name Raider and Slateport to correct it. I then grinded Combatant up against all the trainers that I skipped, then began the journey to Fall Arbor. On Route 112, Machop evolved into Machoke. I headed to Meteor Falls and witnessed the robbery and such, then headed through Rustboro to get the experience share. I then went up Mount Chimney to handle the Grunts and Tabitha before my first battle with Maxi. Machoke beat Mightyena in two hits due to Intimidate. Kadabra O-Code Zubat, and surprisingly Marsh Tomp needed two hits to KO Camerupt. I head down to Lava Ridge and straight for the gym. After fighting my way through, it was time for the Flannery battle. Marsh Tomp O-Code Numel. Slugma survived the first Water Gun and annoyingly set up Sunlight, forcing me to switch to Mud Slap instead to KO. She then brings in Camerupt, which I wear down with Mud Slap, waiting for the sun to go away. The sun is still up, but another water gun that I tried ended up being enough to KO it with about a third of its health left. Finally, she brings in Torkoal, which unfortunately set the sun back up immediately. I'm spamming Mud Slap to lower its accuracy, but it didn't miss a single move. I finally try a water gun to see if it does more, but thanks to the sun, it does not. Torkoal then goes for Overheat, boosted by the sun, which I foolishly thought Marsh Tomp might survive. It did not. I bring in Kadabra, who thankfully outspeeds and is able to KO Torkoal from that range. The battle didn't end up being too hard, but I was starting to see how Water Gun and Mud Slap really just aren't going to be cutting it as well anymore. I head back to Petalburg for the gym I'm confident Machoke will destroy. 
The gym trainers turned out to actually be kind of a pain and required several trips to the Pokemon Center and back, but I wasn't worried about Norman. Uh, yeah, I should have been. Norman leads with Spinda, who doesn't go down as easy as I'd hoped. I switch out Macho to keep it healthy and then KO Spinda with Kadabra. Then comes Vigoroth. Machoke beat it, but took some hits in the process. He next brings in Linoon while I switch to Kadabra because I'm worried about Linoon outspeeding and KOing Machoke. I go for Psybeam and do about half as Linoon goes for Belly Drum, leaving with what looks like to just be one or two HP. I think I'll be okay though as Psybeam does about half, so it should be a two hit KO. I Psybeam in on the turn it heals up, then do the same again, and it lives with one HP! Look at that! Look at that! You almost can't even see the red! Linoon then sweeps through my entire team, and I lose. I decide that it was just bad luck, so I can just try again. I use Kadabra to take out Spinda, so I don't take any damage on Machoke. Then I bring in Machoke to defeat Vigoroth, and do so, but again, take too much damage in the process. Norman then brings in the Demon Linoon. I'm terrified of Belly Drum, so I don't want to heal and risk it getting a free attack max on its first turn. I go for low kick, hoping to either live a hit or have it go for belly drum, then faint from my attack, but neither happens. Linoon's facade chaos mod choke, and it's a crit. Did the crit matter? I admittedly don't know. Was it an unnecessary slap in the face after my first loss? Yes, yes it was. I bring in Breloom and Linoon immediately goes for belly drum while my leech seed misses, because of course it does. Linoon then obliterates Breloom, but Effect Spore poisons it in the process. That's actually a godsend, because Kadabra can now outspeed and finish it with Psybeam, because it'll have below half health. Kadabra comes in and does just that. But now, they're slacking, and I don't have Machoke. Kadabra just did a little bit of damage and then fainted. Marshtomp comes in and I growl on the Truant turn to hope I survive. Then it yawns me as I growl again. I growl a third time, hoping that minus three attack will be enough to let me survive some hits. I heal the sleep as slacking uses facade, and it crits me, ignoring the minus three attack and okoing Marshtop. I was so effing mad. Like, I was, I was, I didn't play for like, a couple days because I just like I didn't want to play this game was rude to me I needed to grind I didn't want to grind so I just didn't play literally two days later I was like okay I can't just not play this again I got to finish this playthrough challenge so I went back in but decided not to grind because I thought hey maybe if I go in with the strategy of dear god keep Machoke healthy so it can KO Linoon and slacking otherwise you will lose then I might win. I lead with Marshtomp to, as I said, protect Machoke. After three mud slaps getting Spinda to a bit over a third health and lowering its accuracy to minus three, I brought in Machoke hoping that whatever Spinda uses would miss. The switch in Teeter Dance missed, but the next one did not. Thankfully Machoke did not hurt itself and Spinda goes down. I switch back into Marshtomp to get rid of Machoke's confusion and begin my mud slapping once more. Once again, after getting into minus three accuracy, I switched Machoke in. The switch in slash hit, but the next one missed, so Machoke took a bit of damage before KOing Vigoroth. In comes Linoon, and I bring in Breloom. Linoon belly drums, but I paralyze it with Stun Spore. While this paralysis will power up its facade, that doesn't really matter because it's got max attack, it's gonna Oko anything anyways, but with the paralysis, now I can outspeed it. I have Breloom use Absorb to get it below half health, then allow it to faint to facade. I bring in Kadabra to KO it with a Psybeam that I know will KO it this time because it's under half. Finally, Slacking. Since Machoke isn't at full health, I'm super nervous it'll get KO'd by the first hit. So I leave in Kadabra and get some Psybeam damage off before sacking it off. On the Truant turn, Machoke low kicks and it does a lot thanks to Slacking's weight. Slacking's berry heals it enough for Norman to not use a potion, so on the next turn Machoke outspeeds and finishes it off. The cursed daddy battle is over. I soon get Surf, which opens up a lot of the Hoenn region for me. The first place I want to go is New Mauville because I want a Magneton. 
and it was Thunder Wave and Sonic Boom, both helpful for catching Pokemon, along with Super Sonic and Spark. Strong electric types are great for the rest of this playthrough because they're super helpful with Wynona, Archie, Juan, and Wallace. And Magneton with Spark is my best option. I went to New Mauville, progressed all the way through, and found the 1% Magneton on my way out. I caught it first try and named it Powerline. Side note, while doing this, I thought that it had to be a Magneton for it to know Spark. Turns out if I had just found a level 26 Magnemite, it would have known Spark and I would have been fine, but whatever, I got what I wanted. I then went up to the northern part of Route 115 and caught a Swellow because it came with Wing Attack and I thought that might be helpful. I did some more training on the water routes between Dufern and Slateport before finally moving along on Route 118. Once I reached Route 119, I decided it was time to swap out my grass type. While Breloom's Stun Spore and Leech Seed were nice, Absorb is basically useless, and I need something that can hit with decent grass type damage. Tropius with Razor Leaf is my best option. It's not a great option, but all of my other ones either only know like one really weak grass type move, like Absorb, or just don't learn any grass moves at all. I found a Tropius and named it Brontosaur, a name that would have worked well as its species name in my opinion. I traversed to the Weather Institute, defeated Team Aqua inside, and received the Cast Form which I named Cast Force, as a reference to an old Pokemon Go video of mine. Next was the rival battle with May, in which I attempted to utilize Cast Force. It almost beat Grovile, but fell to a Leaf Blade. I then tried to grind Cast Form up a bit due to its Powder Snow seeming helpful, but it was super tedious since it struggled to KO anything other than the annoying status-causing Oddishes. I lost patience pretty quickly. I love Cast Form, but god, it's just so weak. I decided to attempt the gym battle against Wynona. Magneton made quick work of Swablu, which considering it was 8 levels higher, was unsurprising. She then brings in Altaria, and I think Cast Form might have a chance with 4 times super effective Powder Snow. I use Hail on the first turn, and Altaria Dragon Dances. Uh, yeah, uh, forgot it knew that. Cast Form survives a plus one Earthquake, but Powder Snow doesn't even do half. Cast Form goes down the next turn, and then Altaria sweeps through the rest of my team. I have now failed my first attempt at a gym battle twice in a row. Anyone who says this challenge was too easy is wrong, because an easy challenge would not irritate me this much. I decide to immediately try again. Magneton easily beats Swablu, and again, she sends in Altaria. This time, I know I need to paralyze it before it can outspeed, even with Dragon Dance, so I click Thunder Wave with Magneton, risking an Earthquake KO. Magneton thankfully survives, and I get the paralysis off. I switch into Cast Form to preserve Magneton and let it take a hit. I get off a Powder Snow, which actually crits, and Altaria gets fully paralyzed. I Powder Snow again, but then Aerial Ace ends Cast Form's run. I bring in Kadabra to finish Altaria off, but then this stupid, dumb bird that should not be a dragon freaking survives! Winona heals back up, and I furiously spam Psybeam, hoping for the confusion, but don't get it. I wear it down a bit before it KOs Kadabra. I then bring in Magneton because it's the only one left standing who can actually do decent damage to this thing, and click Spark. Again, the stupid fluffy chicken lives, and Magneton goes down. I bring in Tropius and finish off the Altaria because thankfully she didn't heal. But now I'm left with only a Grass type, a Fighting type, and a Ground type to defeat three Flying types. I'm in a bad spot, and I realize the only way for me to win this battle is to revive Magneton. So I did. I know, I know, many people consider using revives in battle to be cheap, and other people do harder playthrough challenges without using any in-battle healing items. I get it. But as you can probably tell by how worked up I'm getting during this video, I was getting kind of annoyed and not really enjoying these tough-as-nails gym battles, so I decided to adopt the policy of win by any means necessary so that I can frickin' move on. Also, I ran a Twitter poll immediately after completing this battle, and 79% of you said you wouldn't judge me, so, uh, thanks to the 79% of you. With Magneton healthy again, I was able to defeat her Pelipper after hurting myself in confusion twice, Scarberry in just one hit, and Tropius in a few hits. Prior to moving on in the story, I decided to do a bit more research to figure out my exact final team for the Pokemon League, because I was getting into the later parts of the game. 
During that research, I realized something that I had missed before. I can get a Raichu with Thunderbolt. If I find a Pikachu in the Safari Zone that's at least level 26, it will know Thunderbolt, a base 95 power stab move. Considering there are two big water type bosses left in the game, I had to get one. And also wished I would have known about it prior to battling Winona because that really would have helped. It took a while, but finally a Pikachu of adequate level showed up. Thankfully, I caught it before it fled and I named it Storm Surge, intending to reference surge protectors and totally forgetting that Storm Surge is a term for a big wave caused by a storm. So, I guess it still tangentially works because surfing Pikachu is the thing? Mount Pyre was uneventful, as was the Magma Hideout. The battle with Maxi was a bit interesting at times though. And by interesting, I mean super aggravating because at one point, Magneton didn't get to attack for five turns in a row due to confusion and flinching. So yeah, that was fun. Also, Marshtomp lost to Camerupt, which was pretty embarrassing. I did win the battle, but a water type losing to a fire ground type, it's not great. I head back to Lilico for the final rival battle of the game, which wasn't very difficult. Magneton beat Tropius and Pelipper, Marshtomp beat Slugma, and Machoke beat Grovile. At this point, I decided my team needed to be more fully evolved, so I evolved Marshtomp, Kadabra, and Machoke in rapid succession. Next was the Aqua Hideout, which I rushed through pretty quickly. Now that the blockade was gone, I could finally get two members I desperately wanted. The first required me to get into Shoal Cave and all the way to the bottom. Once in the icy bottom floor, I found myself a Snow Runt. I needed one that was 28 or above because it learns Crunch at that level, a move I wanted to help with Tate and Liza, plus Phoebe in the league. Its other moves are Headbutt, Protect, and Icy Wind. Icy Wind isn't the best ice type move in the game, but it's the best ice type move in this game on an ice type, so I really wanted it because I'm expecting it to be instrumental against Drake. I named it Permafrost, then headed straight back out to Moss Deep City to get the Super Rod. I then began fishing on the shoreline because with the Super Rod, I can find Wild Whalmer up to level 45. If I catch a Whalmer that's at least level 41, it will know Water Spout, the most powerful move available to me in this rule set, other than self-KOing ones like Self Destruct and Explosion. If Waylord is at full health when it uses Water Spout, the move has 150 base power. After a little while, I found the high enough level Whalmer that I needed. I named it Geyser and used my one rare candy to evolve it into Waylord pretty much immediately. And yes, getting this Waylord means that I am boxing my starter Swampert. I feel kind of bad, but when my options are Water Spout or Water Gun, I'm gonna pick the move that is almost four times as strong when Waylord is healthy. I then spent the next chunk of time battling most of the various water route trainers in an effort to level up Snow Runt. Once it evolved into Glalie, I felt I was ready for the Moss Deep Gym. I led with Glalie and Waylord using Icy Wind and Water Spout first. Zatu got off a Calm Mind, annoyingly making it buffer to my special hits. Icy Wind didn't do much, but slowed them down for future turns. Claydol's Earthquake wasn't too bad, but unfortunately it did weaken Water Spout, which still did a large chunk to Claydol, but just a bit to Zatu. The next turn I went for Icy Wind again because I wasn't sure Crunch would do more to Zatu. I used Water Pulse with Waylord this time because I was worried Claydol would make Water Spout weaker again with another Earthquake, but Waylord outsped now thanks to Icy Wind from the previous turn. Water Pulse KO'd Claydol before it could move as Soul Rock was brought in. Zatu's Psychic really hurt Glalie, but he held on. The next turn I used Crunch on Zatu, which barely survived. Soul Rock absorbed Light, but then Waylord's Water Spout KO'd both opponents, actually being a crit on Soul Rock. I don't know if it mattered, but I was still stoked about it. Lunatone was their last Pokemon. Glalie crunched it, then fell to its Psychic, but Waylord finished it off with a Water Spout. I beat their four Pokemon with only one, which was really nice after the nightmares that the last two gyms were. The next step was clearing out the Space Center, a task I did not remember was a thing since it's been so long since I've played Emerald specifically. Also, question, does Maxi smack Steven back several feet here? Is that what's happening? Like, it really confused me and also just didn't make sense. Does Maxi have like super strength to smack a grown man back that far? Like, what was that? It was now time for the multi-battle with Steven against Tabitha and Maxi, which wasn't very hard. 
Machamp, Waylord, and Steven's Metang made pretty easy work of all the opposing Pokemon. Also, something interesting that I realized during this playthrough is that in Emerald, you fight Maxi three times and Archie just once. Like, isn't that kind of weird? You'd think they would have figured out a way to have like two and two, not three and one. I don't know, it's weird. I then headed straight for the seafloor cavern. I got through it pretty quickly before reaching Archie. Machamp handled my Diana, and while Crobat took a while due to annoying confusion, Magneton beat it, then Sharpedo right after. The world starts to end, but before I do that, I decide it's finally time to start grinding up my Pikachu in advance of the battle with Juan. I evolve it into Raichu immediately, because I don't need to worry about it missing moves. Off I go to the Sky Pillar, where I tell Rayquaza to wake his booty up and control his children. It calms Groudon and Kyogre down, and after some grinding, it's time for the battle with Juan. He leads with Love Disk, who Raichu easily Okos. Next is Whiskash, who Tropius Okos with a critical hit that ignored its Amnesia special defense boost. Next is Celio, who Machamp Okos. Then he sends in Kingdra, this evil, evil creature. Battling this one Pokemon took over 10 minutes. I realize 10 minutes doesn't actually sound like that long of a time, but it felt really long to me. I had no super effective damage for it, so none of my attacks did a whole lot of damage. Additionally, it had frickin' Double Team, one of the most BS moves in the game, and Rest, something that would instantly negate all my hard-earned damage and any status conditions. It's a nightmare. At one point, I had finally gotten it down to low enough health for Spark to finish it off, so I didn't heal Magneton fearing a Rest. Not only did Spark miss due to double team, but Kingdra wasn't fully paralyzed, so Magneton goes down. I bring in Raichu, but Thunderbolt misses, as Kingdra rests back up to completely healthy. After many turns of missing, at one point I decide to leave in Raichu on a risky turn to try and paralyze it or maybe crit it. The move hits, but doesn't KO or paralyze, and Kingdra KOs Raichu. I bring in Alakazam to outspeed and KO before it can rest, but Juan uses a freaking Hyper Potion. Psybeam does land twice in a row though, and it looks like it's a three hit KO, but then the third misses, and Kingdra heals back up to full. I land two more while it's sleeping, and it gets me down to red with Ice Beam. I have to go for Psybeam to KO it before it can rest, and it hits, but this piece of garbage, stupid, straw-nosed, Fish lives with one! I thought the last playthrough of barely surviving hits was bad. This one, oh, so much worse. It was awful for my mental health, and spoiler alert, there are still more to come. Kingdra KOs Alakazam immediately. My only hope is Machamp, since Tropius would instantly fall to an ice beam, and my sixth party member is the Surf user that I had to have to reach the gym. I try a low kick, but Kingdra outspeeds and rests. After another miss due to it being at about plus four evasion by now, I realize my only hope is to land crits for big damage, so I use focus energy. I land one and it does a good chunk. I miss one, then have to heal. I land another, but don't get the crit I need, and Kingdra survives. I try a karate chop in case it's stronger, but it's not. I heal out of necessity again. Then the stupid thing double teams two more times, most definitely now at max evasion. Machamp lands a hit though, but then it rests again. I land another low kick, then another, and the second one was the crit I needed. Kingdra finally goes down. Machamp easily Okos the dark type Crawdaunt with a low kick, and this wet hell of a battle is finally over. Now that I can use Waterfall, I can get my final intended team member for the league, Bagon. I head to Meteor Falls to search for one that's at least level 33, otherwise it won't have Dragon Breath, with its other moves being Ember, Headbutt, and Focus Energy. I wanted Salamence not only to help with the battle against Drake, but also because I wanted a really strong Pokemon with neutral damage capabilities, because I anticipated having to use that a lot in the battles against Phoebe and Wallace. After a short while, I find one that's high enough level and named it Fafnir, the name of a dragon from Norse mythology. I give it the experience share and head for the victory road. Suddenly, Wally arrives at the beginning, which surprised me as I did not remember that his battle is at the start of the victory road in Emerald. Glalie handled Altaria and Machamp handled Delcaddy. Glalie fell to Gardevoir, but Magneton finished it off. Alakazam barely didn't Oka Roselia twice, but did eventually beat it. Magneton was a giant pain due to paralysis and confusion, but finally Machamp defeated it. Then Bagon evolved as a result of this battle. The trip through the victory road was mostly fine. I dodged most trainers so I could get through as fast as possible. 
I got through mostly in one piece. And now it's time for the grind. And this, oh God, it took a while. I recorded 70 minutes of grinding footage, all played at 10 times speed. So like, if this was a regular game, like, oh my God, that would have been hours and hours and hours. Shellgon evolved during the course of the grind, and once it was done, I had my final squad of six, all at level 52, knowing the moves they knew when I caught them. It was finally time to take on the league. First was Sydney, whose Mighty Anna intimidated Machamp, lowering its attack and causing Low Kick not to Oko. After Mighty Anna Sand attacked, I decided to switch to get rid of the attack and accuracy drops. Magneton tanked the incoming hit no problem, and while he healed Mighty Anna the next turn, Spark was an easy two hit KO. Magneton then KO'd Crawdon easily. Shift Tree's double teams got a little scary, but Machamp landed the one low kick necessary to KO. Machamp then cleaned up by Okoing both Absol and Cacturn. Sydney was done. Next was Phoebe, who wouldn't be as easy since I didn't have stab super effective moves for any of her team members. Her first Dusclops was a bit annoying due to trying to protect pressure stall out my crunch PP, which was something that I was a bit worried about. One crunch did about half and got the special defense drop, but because I was worried about more protects wasting the crunch PP, I decided to switch to someone whose strongest move had substantially more PP to burn. That someone was Magneton, who did lose some extra spark PP due to protect, but finished off the Dusclops. Next was her stronger Dusclops, which doesn't protect, but does have super effective Rock Slide. My first crunch didn't do a whole lot, but I got the special defense drop again, and its Rock Slide missed. I thought I was going to have a stretch of really good luck, but nope, the stupid thing lives on one. I am starting to hate you, Emerald. Thankfully though, the berry kicked in, healing Dusclops enough for Phoebe not to use a potion. My next crunch KO'd, but thanks to pressure, I was down to only five left. Her first bayonet was an easy two hit KO with crunch, but I couldn't immediately KO it on the second turn because it used grudge. I used protect to stall a turn, but then finished it off. Next was Sableye, who isn't weak to anything, so I brought in Salamence for powerful neutral damage. My first Dragon Breath does about half, then my second one leaves it with one, because of course it does. She heals, then it takes an Ember and two more Dragon Breaths to KO it. Her final Pokemon is her last Bennett. Crunch does most of its health, but then she heals, then two more Crunches KO it, meaning Glalie finished the battle with literally zero Crunches left. Glacia's battle was a welcome break from the intensity and was pleasantly easy. Machamp's low kick O-code every single one of her heavy ice types. Then it was time for Drake. Salamence's Dragon Breath was barely not enough to KO Shellgun, so we took a Rock Tomb hit. As he healed, I used Focus Energy, thinking the upped critical hit ratio would help with later Pokemon. It ended up not being needed though, as my next Dragon Breath was enough to KO. He brings in Altaria, and I bring in Glalie. Icy Wind does most, but not all of its health, but thankfully it did lower its speed to cancel out the speed boost from its Dragon Dance. I expect him to heal the next turn and click Icy Wind again, but he doesn't heal. Icy Wind misses though, as Altaria goes for Double Edge. It does a good chunk to Glalie, but the recoil knocks out Altaria in the process. Next is Flygon, whose Flamethrower almost KO'd Glalie, but he held on and O-Code Flygon with Icy Wind. Next was his Salamence, who I brought in Magneton for in an attempt to paralyze it, preventing it from outspeeding other members of my team. Unfortunately, Flamethrower crit, and Magneton went down before it could paralyze it. I brought in Raichu to sack off while I healed up Glalie, hoping Static would activate on the Dragon Claw hit. It did not, but Raichu survived. I Thunderbolted the next turn, and not only got damage, but also got the paralysis that I wanted. Raichu then lives another Dragon Claw, allowing me to get even more damage off before fainting. Salamence's Citrus Berry healed it a bit, but I knew we were in the clear because it was most certainly in Icy Wind KO range. Unfortunately, Icy Wind missed again, and Glalie got a Flamethrower to the face, something I'd been trying to avoid this whole time with the paralysis and damage from Raichu. Glalie survived though, and the next Icy Wind connected and KO'd. Finally was his Kingdra, a Kingdra much easier to handle than Wands, both because it doesn't have double team and rest, and because I have super effective damage. Two Dragon Breaths from Salamence were enough to KO it. Drake was done. Finally, it was time for Wallace, the last battle of the playthrough. 
Magneton was doing well against Waylord until he did a strategic switch into Whiskash, who absorbed the spark that would have KO'd. I brought in Salamence against it, since the only moves Whiskash can hurt Salamence with are resisted surfs and intimidated hypermemes. After it used Amnesia, I switched to using Headbutts instead of Dragon Breath. I wore it down over time, but surprisingly he didn't heal when it got to red health, so Salamence beat it. Wallace brings Waylord back in and Magneton gets to finish the job. Next is Gyarados, a Pokemon I'm scared of due to previous experiences, mainly in Platinum. Instead of one of my electric types, I bring in Glalie to try and slow it down with Icy Wind a bit before something else comes in. I lower its speed, it Dragon Dances. I lower it again, it Earthquakes. I lower it again, and Gyarados KOs Glalie. I bring in Raichu, who finishes it off with a Thunderbolt. Next was Tenacruel, who proved to be tougher than I thought it would be. Psybeam did about half, then it poisoned Alakazam. I Psybeamed again, and oh, oh, would you look at that? It lives with one or two or three HP. Big surprise, can't believe it, it's ridiculous. I take a Hydro Pump, then he heals. My next Psybeam confuses, I think maybe for the first time I'll play through. Tentacruel doesn't hurt itself, but that's fine. I'm confident my next Psybeam will KO, and even if it doesn't, it'll hurt itself and fall. Neither occurred, and Tentacruel beat Alakazam. I bring in Raichu, and he heals back to full. Thunderbolt does less than Psybeam, and Raichu has to take some Sludge Bomb damage and get poisoned by it before I can finally KO it. Then comes Ludicolo, and things got... sticky. I brought in Salamence because Ludicolo can do almost no damage to it since it resists Surf and Giga Drain. Unfortunately, Dragon Breath doesn't do much, so I'm stuck whittling it down. After a little while, it Leech Seeds, making things tougher. I got it down to red HP and thought I was in the clear, but apparently Wallace had another full restore despite already using several. Now that it's at full, Ludicolo starts spamming double team like crazy, and we know how I feel about double team. The combination of missing most of my moves and the fact that they didn't do much damage caused me to actually run out of Dragon Breath PP. Headbutt did even less than Dragon Breath, so after several minutes I let Salamence fall to Leech Seed damage. I bring in Machamp, who is immediately Leech Seeded. I used Focus Energy to boost my crit rate, then try to Leer before realizing that could miss too, and it did. Surf also did more damage to Machamp than it did to Salamence, so after not landing a single low kick, Machamp fell. I brought in an only partially healthy Magneton, which I thought would tank Surf hits just fine. It didn't land a single spark, and then Surf crit O-code Magneton. My last Pokemon is Raichu, and I Thunderbolt because I've given up hope. It actually lands, the first hit I've landed in a while, so I heal the next turn because I might still have a chance. I land another Thunderbolt, but then Ludicolo Leech Seeds me. I land a third Thunderbolt, which Ludicolo survives. I have to attack the next turn, because if I don't KO here, Leech Seed heals it out of Thunderbolt's range. I click Thunderbolt, and it misses. Giga Drain KOs, and I lose the battle. So, yeah, uh, I got through the entire Pokemon League until Wallace's second to last Pokemon, which proceeded to use a BS double team strategy that KO'd four of my Pokemon over the course of 10 minutes. I was fuming mad. I didn't break anything or do anything crazy. I might have yelled a little bit, but I was furious. I got that far and then lost to Wallace's second to last Pokemon using the BS double team method. It's not even worth it to call it a strategy. It's not a strategy. It's making the battle turn from strategy into just RNG, just luck. That's it. I lost because I wasn't lucky enough. Double team and other evasiveness raising moves never should have been in the game. So now I'm, I'm just stuck. I'm mad as hell and don't wanna play, but feel like I have to play because I have to get the playthrough done so I can get this video done. I could grind my team up, but really didn't want to do that because I already spent eons doing that and hated the entire process, and also I didn't even know if that would work. I considered grinding up that Swellow that I caught a while ago because it knows Wing Attack and I would have super effective stab damage against the Ludicolo, but that'd be grinding up a Pokemon from level 25 to 50. Like, oh god, I really didn't want to do that. After a dinner break and venting to my fiance Jubilee, she suggested just grinding up the Pokemon best suited to fighting Ludicolo, which 
I thought was a pretty good idea, so I did it. I trained Salamence up to 58, then gave it two rare candies to get it to 60. I also got Alakazam up a level to ensure that Psybeam could two it KO Tenacruel. I blazed through the first four members of the league. I don't need to explain these battles since I've already beat them once and did so more easily the second time. My second attempt at fighting Wallace started well since Magneton crit Okode Waylord. I knew Raichu would outspeed Gyarados since Glalie did in the first battle, so I immediately brought it in and Thunderbolt Okode Gyarados. Whiskash took three hits from Salamence to get down to red, but then it made the mistake of Hyper Beaming. That prevented it from healing on the following turn, so Salamence beat it. In comes Tenacruel, who Alakazam can now guaranteed to hit KO this time due to the extra level, so I beat it no problem. Finally, I am once again face to face with the evil Ludicolo. I Dragon Breath and then it double teams immediately. Thankfully, the second one hit and paralyzed it, and no Leech Seed yet. I now realize it's not in KO range for Dragon Breath, so I need to do a bit of damage first as to not get it into full restore range. I Ember, but it misses. I Ember a second time and it hits, and thank god, Wallace doesn't heal. It takes a few more turns because of Dragon Breath missing and needing to heal Salamence, but he never Leech Seeds or full restores. So when I land a Dragon Breath, Ludicolo finally goes down. Finally, he sends in my Lodic. Raichu's Thunderbolt only does about a third, and Surf does a lot. So I use Slam to get it into the range of another attack before Raichu goes down. I forgot about the berry though, so my Lodic then heals to over half. I click Sonic Boom to get it back below half, because I didn't think Spark would KO and I didn't want it to go into red HP, but Surf does a lot and outspeeds, so I'm forced to switch. I switch to Glalie to sack it off while I get Magneton back to full health so it can live a Surf, but then my Lodic uses Recover. I decide to spam Crunch in an attempt to get a special defense drop, because I need to be able to get big damage. I don't get it after a few turns though, and Glalie goes down. I bring in Machamp hoping Low Kick will be good enough damage, and oh my god I should have done this sooner. It does well over half, so while he full restores, a Low Kick, surviving a Surf, and a Low Kick later, it's over. I have finally won. This was my final squad that I used to beat the league, but these Pokemon also helped a good amount at one point or another during the playthrough. I consider all of them part of the team. As for my final thoughts on this playthrough, as you can probably tell, I didn't enjoy it very much. There was a lot of grinding necessary, and as you know, there were a lot of battles that were very frustrating for me. Plus, an annoying aspect of this that I didn't really realize until I started playing is that if I need any HM moves, any at all, I can't have my full team of six. Like, if I just need Surf or Fly, like, I can't have the full squad because my full squad can't know any HMs. I'm proud to have completed it though, so if you have any suggestions for other playthrough challenges you want to see me do that hopefully are not as hard as this one because I value my mental health, let me know down in the comments below. Also, shout out to Machamp, definitely gets the MVP crown for this playthrough. But anyways, before I wrap things up, I want to take a quick minute to thank the sponsor for this video, Audible. I'm actually really excited that I got them as a sponsor because I have been using their excellent audiobook service for over a year now. Start your free trial today by heading to audible.com slash mnjtv or by texting mnjtv to 500-500. Audible has the world's largest selection of audiobooks and audio entertainment, which I love listening to while driving or working or working out or just relaxing. Their system is super convenient too because if you start listening on your computer, then switch to the Audible app on your phone, it'll save your progress exactly. Members get tons of free benefits like picking one free audiobook per month, keeping their library of audiobooks forever even if they cancel their service, and getting free updates from reputable news sources like the New York Times. Like I said, I've been an Audible member for a year already, so I promise you it's worth it. I personally recommend the Super Powers series by Drew Hayes. It's about college for superheroes, including focusing on a group of students that used to be powers, where they can't control their powers, but now can, but have to keep it a secret. It's funny and intense and fascinating, has just such cool fight scenes. I loved all four. So start listening yourself with a 30 day free trial where you can pick one audiobook and two Audible originals totally for free. Head to audible.com slash mnjtv or text mnjtv to 500 500. Thanks so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video and want to see some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend this video over here. 
Also, if you want to watch some more playthrough challenges to tide you over until my next one, I made a playlist of uh, playthrough challenges that I like, not just my own, all sorts of them. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, big fans. Gotta catch them all.